Back again. Today is Tuesday, October uh tenth, twenty twenty three. Tomorrow is the Hump Day. I have a、uh, some patch of land. That's about one acre of land, and、uh, mostly it's a、uh, rice paddy, uh, because the、uh, the one acre is divided into three pieces. Uh, the two pieces are very small, but one is large. The two pieces are just for dry land, while the biggest one is the、uh, furrow, very moist land, optimal for、uh, ri- raising rice.、Uh, I'm trying to、uh, plant some、uh, fruit trees in the、uh, arid land, arid lands of the two pieces. So I I am interested in grafting because. Uh, ordinary trees, when they are not grafted, they just their fruits are just small,、uh, not juicy,、uh, not sweet. So we need to learn w- w- what the grafting grafting is and how we could improve the productivity or fertility of the trees. Uh, so uh, I pulled off this article from. Uh, from the uni-、uh, Missouri University, University of Missouri Extension, and I am trying to read this aloud so that I could practice English. Yes, I am Korean.、Uh, my mother tongue is Korean, but、uh, I have to constantly、uh, practice English by reading it because I, I don't have friends around me except John Jackson, Tom,、uh, what's his name?、Uh, Thomas Kim,、uh, Chris Conrad, Luke Viano, and Brian Dean, and Chris Davison, and Michael Kaberberg, and some other good people, uh, but uh, they are not around. They just come and go、uh, when their needs arise. So I need to practice English by reading it aloud, assuming, pretending that I am just presenting the material.、Uh, In front of the students, in front of university students, so I gotta be careful, and I gotta be an expert on this、uh, subject, and also I gotta memorize good words and expressions and so on. So、uh, that's why I'm trying to read this article. So it's a two pronged approach.、Uh, so,、uh, well, without further ado,、uh, let's go ahead and uh, uh, read the article. Reviewed by David Krenklein, a horticulture extension state specialist, Division of Plant Sciences and Technology. Here is always sciences and technology. Technology is singular, sciences plural. Grafting, right? Grafting is the act of joining two plants together. The upper part of the graft. The scion becomes the top of the plant. The lower portion, the understock, becomes the root system or part of the trunk. Very important. Although grafting usually refers to joining only two plants, it may be a combination of several. Really, a third plant part added between two others becomes the trunk or a portion of it. This is called interstem. Multiple grafts may produce an apple tree with several varieties, or a rose of Sharon shrub with several different colors of flowers. Really, rose of Sharon is Mugunghwa, the national flower of the Republic of Korea. My country. By the way, I work for Korea Telecom, KT, the number one carrier in Korea. Uh, and I am very proud of my company. I'm very loyal to my company. But in five years' time, I have to retire. So,、uh, if you have a good job opportunity for me, don't hesitate. Always contact me、uh, in four to five years, or even in two years.、Uh, I could get a golden parachute and get the hell out of here and retire. Why graft? Some cultivars, varieties of plants. Do not come true from seeds. Others are difficult or impossible, really, to pr- reproduce from cuttings or other propagation techniques. 
uh, don't come true from seeds. That's a good expression. Don't come true. I don't know. Don't never heard of the expression before. I think uh, we would just say they would not spread or they would not procreate from seeds. But another expression here is to not come true from seeds. Propagation techniques, other propagation techniques, right? Grafting, top working is a way to change a large tree from an old to a new variety. This is also a method of using a root system better adapted to soil or climate than that produced naturally by a non-crafted plant. By using special understocks or interstems, grafting is a way to produce dwarf plants. Hmm, dwarf, dwarf, Nanjangi man. What are the limitations? Not all plants can be grafted. Okay, it makes sense. So there are many uh, bright people, but there are some stupid people too. It's the same with the plants. Not all plants can be grafted. Generally, only plants closely related botanically from a good graft union. What? Generally, only plants closely related botanically form a good graft union. Okay, I didn't know. I got confused. From, I thought from, but it's a verb form. Generally, only plants closely related botanically form a good graft union. A good graft union. Good graft union. Grafting is not a means of developing new varieties. It's not a means of developing new plants, new varieties. Grafting is not a means of developing new varieties. The stack and cyan must be comparable, yeah, botanically related. Incompatible grafts may not form a union, or the union may be weak union, sexual union, man. When you get married, you have a sexual union. A poor union results in plants that either grow poorly, break off, or eventually die. The compatibility of a plants has been determined through many years of trial. There is no other way to determine whether or not two plants will produce a good craft union. This publication will help you make a decision about the possibility. So there's no other way to determine whether or not two plants will produce a good craft union. What can be grafted? Most varieties of a particular fruit or flowering species are interchangeable and can be grafted. Because of differences in vigor, some are better able to support others as understocks. Understocks, top working, uh, cyan, right? Understocks, understocks, interstems, interstems, multiple grafting. Cultivar. For example, although a union is possible, source cherry is not a good understock for sweet cherry. Sweet cherry is more commonly grafted onto mozard, prunus, avium, or mahalep, p mahalep seedlings. Plants of the same botanical genus and species can usually be grafted even though they are a different variety. Some botanical genus, right? Species. Plants with the same genus but of a different species often can be grafted. But the result may be weak or short-lived or they may not unite at all. They would not form union at all. They may not unite at all. So genus and species. 종속 과목 과목 right? Something like that in Korean. Genus, species, department, 
uh, branch. I don't know if there are some classifications uh, of the plants. Plants of different genera are less successfully grafted, although there are some cases where this is possible. For example, queens, boa, genus, Cydonia may be used as a dwarfing rootstock for pear, genus Pyrus. Really? Queens. Yeah, they look similar, but the taste is different and the seeds, seeds may be similar. Hmm. Plants of different families cannot be grafted successfully. Right? Family, we have family now. Genera, genus. Genus species, genera, families cannot be grafted successfully. Although it has been reported that relatively short lived grafts of herbaceous plants of different families have been made, there is no successful practice for commercial or home grafting of woody plants of different families. Woody plants, right? Woody. Do we have a morning wood? Woody plants, right? Woody. <laughs> it, remi it reminds me of the uh, slang, vulgar slang term wood. Woody, right? Woody. Strong, wood-like. Woody plants. It is uh, sometimes believed that two plants can be made into a genetically different plant by the process of grafting. However, there is no basis for this idea. Although there are cases where a different type of shoot develops from the graft union, this is the result of chimera, a type of muta mutation. Chimera, chimera, type, a type of mutation. This is not a true intermingling of the genetic structure of two different plants, as occurs in seed produced hybrids. Seed produced hybrids. Seed produced hybrids. Chimera. Chimera, a type of mutation. It's not a true intermingling of the genetic structure of two different plants. It's not a true intermingling. As occurs in seed produced hybrids. When is the proper time to graft? Most grafting is done in late winter or early spring. Before new growth begins, the best time is after the chance of severe cold has passed, but well before hot weather arrives. Cyan wood may be collected during the winter, stored in a cold, moist place at temperatures close to 34 degrees Fahrenheit. Wow, uh, that's, I think... Uh, almost zero degrees uh, Celsius. At home, a few cyans could be stored in a plastic bag in the refrigerator with moist paper towels, or they could be dipped in paraffin so they retain moisture. Dipped in paraffin, right? So graft can be done in the spring, but before uh, the hot weather sets in. So, uh, uh, March, uh, April, or May are the good times, or even the uh, February. Yeah, I'm drinking ginseng uh, tea. What materials are needed? Knife, grafting wax, grafting tape, budding strips, nails, grafting tool. Knife. A good quality carbon steel knife able to hold a sharp edge is the key to grafting success. To grafting success. Although special grafting and budding knives are desirable, you can use almost any good pocket knife. Keep material to sharpen the knife handy. Okay, keep material to sharpen the knife handy. Sharpen the knife, material. Keep the keep material handy, man. Keep material to sharpen the knife handy. Grafting wax. After the graft is made, some covering must be used.
to keep it from drying out. Either a hand wax or a brush wax may be used. A hand wax is most commonly used for home grafting. It is softened by the heat of the hand and can be easily applied. Heated waxes may be brushed on, but make sure the wax is not too hot. Heat could damage the tender cambial tissue. Okay, cambial tissue. Tender cambial tissue. Grafting tape. This is a special tape with a cloth backing that decomposes before girdling the plant can occur. Tapes may be used for binding crafts where there is not enough natural pressure. Electrical and masking tapes are also used. Masking tape is suitable where little pressure is required, as in the whip graft. Budding strips. I get confused. Grafting tape. Uh, we usually use the uh, plastic tape, a uh, very transparent plastic tape, a uh, vinyl. In the uh, chemical term, is a vinyl tape. Uh, this is a special tape with a cloth backing that decomposes before girdling the plant can occur. Tapes may be used to binding grafts where there is not enough natural pressure. Electrical and masking tapes are also used. Really, making tape is suitable where little pressure is required. Masking tape is suitable where little pressure is required as in the web graft. Budding strips. Budding strips are elastic bands. Really, budding strips. They look like a wide rubber band that has been cut open. Budding strips secure several types of grafts with small stocks and science, nails, veneer, bridge, and in arching grafts require long thin nails. Long thin nails. Half inch nails are long enough for most grafts. Except for bridge grafting, which may require three fourth inch nails. Grafting tool. Specially designed tools have been developed for grafting. The most common one is used for cleft grafting. It has a blade used to split the stub and wedge to hold the split open while the scions are inserted. If this tool is unavailable, use a heavy knife and a fairly wide edge wedge, at least two inches long for cleft grafting, cleft grafting, cleavage, right, cleft. Uh, you break it open with knife. Use a mallet or a hammer to pound the grafting tool or a heavy knife into the stub, like a stub of your cigarette, stub, uh, understock. Split the stub and insert the wedge to open the split. To open the split, split the step, split the step, split the step, and insert the wedge to open the split. What grafting techniques should be used? Grafting techniques can be divided into two basic types, which are largely determined by the size of the understock. In some cases, a graft may be made to join a scion and on the stack of nearly equal size. The other type attaches a small scion to a, a much larger on the stack. In this case, several scions may be attached to the under stack, as in cleft or bark grafting, whip graft. Xylem, cambium, phloem, Bark. A. Cuts for the whip graft must be smooth and straight. Smooth and straight. B. Cut again to form the tongue.
push stack and cyan tightly together. D. Wrap graft to keep cuts tight and to prevent drying. E. Whip and tongue graft with a cyan attached to root system. Whip and tongue graft with a cyan attached to root system. Crafts with a similar scion and under stock sizes, whip craft and bench craft. The whip craft figure one is fairly easy and heals rapidly. It works best when the stock and scion are of similar diameter, preferably between one quarter and one half inch. one quarter on one half inch okay the stack can be either a plant growing in the field or a dormant bare root plant as in the bench grafting the stack must be smooth and straight grained do not graft near a point where side twigs or branches have developed do not cra craft near a point where side twigs or branches have developed. A scion should be one year old wood, preferably the same size as the stock. If the stock is larger than scion, contact can be made on only one side. The scion should never be larger than the stock. Okay, I gotta remember this. Scion should never be larger than stock. And the scion should be one year old wood, preferably uh, the, the same size as the stack. If the stack is larger than scion, contact can be made on only one side. Preparing the stack and scion. For this technique, the cuts made in both stack and scion should match. On both parts, make a smooth sloping cut one to two and a half inches long depending so one one or two and a half inch that's very long inches long depending on the thickness of the material figure 1a right figure 1a uh Make the first cut with a single smooth cut with no waves or whittling. No waves, right? Smooth, straight. No wavy, right? No waves, no whittling. Whit, whit. Uh, rugged grains. The beginner should practice by cutting extra twigs. A good quality sharp knife is essential. Cutting the stack. The stack may be for a bench craft, a stem, and a root system of a young plant, or a piece of root. Make a slanting cut about 2 inches from the butt, start of root system. Make a slanting cut about 2 inches from the butt, start of root system, of the young whip. Although grafts may be made with a simple union of two slanting cuts. Although grafts may be made with a, with a simple union of two slanting, two sloping, right? S two slanting, two sloping cuts, the strongest graft results from a whip and tongue system whip and tongue to form the tongue uh, hold one sided slanting cut facing you and support it with your finger about one third down from the tip of this cut make a downward cut about half inch long as close to parallel with the grain of the wood as possible figure 1b cutting the cyan 
the cutting procedure should be exactly the same as that for the stock. The only difference is that the cuts are made at the bottom of the cyan piece, whereas they are made at the top of the stock. The more similar the cuts on the two pieces, the greater chances of successful graft union. Fitting the stock and cyan after the cuts are made on both parts, push them together tightly enough so that the cut surfaces match as closely as possible. Figure 1C. The cambial area, area immediately under the bark of both pieces, must be aligned for a union to develop. If the cyan and stock are not the same size, match the cambiums on one side only. Match the cambiums on one side only. The lower tip of the cyan should not hang over the stock. Okay, lower tip of the cyan should not hang over the stock. It should match the stock. Wrapping the graft. In most cases, it is safer and better to wrap the graft to keep it tight to prevent drying. Figures 1D and 1E. Wrap the graft with a rubber budding strip, grafting tape, or a plastic tape such as electrical tape. Electrical tape, duct tape. So we know the duct tape. Uh, electrical tape, plastic tape, uh, grafting tape, a uh, rubber budding strip. If the wrapping material does not decay naturally, cut it about a month after growth begins. Okay, one, up, one month later, you need to cut it. Waxing or waxing to prevent the graft union from drying the area should be waxed. Cover the wrapped area with wax as uniformly as possible. In wrapping and waxing, be careful not to dislodge the aligned cambial areas. Dislodge the aligned cambial areas. Cleft, graft, cleft, cleft, graft, cleft, graft, cleft, graft. A cut stack. Smoothly, trim any rough edges with a knife. B. Split stock and open the cleft. Open with a cleft grafting tool. C. Make a long, smooth cut to prepare cyan. D. Cut again to make a pie-shaped wet. Hmm. Promptly insert the cyan into stock after cutting. Good cambial contact. No cambial contact. Wrong. Right. Mm -hmm. Cambium uh, layers must match closely, right? I get confused though. So uh, if it is inserted, then and what happens? Okay, so it's cambium, cambium, cambium. <clears throat> G, a very slight slant can ensure cambial contact. Very good. H. After insertion, wax thoroughly to prevent drying. I. After the first year, shorten the cyan to allow the other to develop. Shorten, the, shorten one cyan to allow the other to develop. Grafts with small cyans and large on the stacks. The cleft graft. 
The cleft graft figure two is most uh, most commonly used to top work a tree, that is to change form from one variety to another. Top work a tree. Top work a tree. Top work a tree. It can be used on either young or mature trees. Young trees can be cleft grafted on the trunk, while old trees are grafted on branches. Not more than two and a half inches in diameter. Young trees may be cleft, grafted on the trunk, while other、uh, older trees are grafted on branches, not more than、uh, two and a half inches in diameter. Branches fully exposed to sunlight, and in the main street, a、uh, street, a、uh, stream of sap flow are mostly、uh, more successful than those in shaded or inactive areas. What does it mean? Branches fully exposed to sunlight, and in the main stream of sap flow are more successful, and those in shaded than those in shaded or inactive areas. Grafts on upright branches grow better than those on horizontal branches.、Uh, branches. Grafts on upright branches、um, grow better, right? Yeah, I'm learning Chinese, so. Preparing the stack, branches of large trees or trunk of a small tree must be sawed off to provide a stock for the science. Select a smooth, not free, straight-grained section. Sew the branch off at the right angle to the grain. Figure two a. Uh, where's the two a? Right, two a. Okay, got it. Good. Got it. Get it. Good. Don't tear or split the bark. If the saw cut is not smooth, use a knife to trim off the rough edges. The bark must be tight to form a successful graft. Using a grafting tool or a heavy knife that may be tapped with a mallet, drive the blade into the stem. To split the stack without the through the center, so a split extends about two inches into the branch. Figure to be two inches. There's five centimeters. Preparing the scion, the scion for the cleft graft, cleft graft, cleft graft, cleft graft should be made from one year old wood, about、uh, a quarter inch in diameter. Usually. It is best to cut a scion long with three buds, so it can be inserted into the lowest bud just above the stock. Always note which is the top and bottom of a scion stick. A scion will not grow if inserted upside down. Hmm, I should make sure that there's、uh, which one is the top and which one is the top of the scion.、Uh, start below the lowest bud and make a long, smooth cut toward the base. Figure to see. So it has to, it has to have some、uh, two to three buds. The cut should have a surface. A、uh, one to one and a half inches long. Turn the scion to the opposite side, and make a second smooth cut of the same length, so that one side, the side containing the lowest bud, is slightly thicker with the other side. Figure two D. Where's D, man? D. Come on, man. D. So we have two beds here, right? Two beds. One, two. You make a cut first here, 
cut again to make a pie shaped wedge. Oh, one is a slightly longer, right? One side is slightly longer. The cut should have a surface one to one and a half inches long. Turn the scion to the opposite side and make a, a second smooth cut of the same length so that one side, the side containing the lowest bud, is slightly thicker than the other side. Okay, the wedge that is formed does not need a sharp point. A blunt point is preferable. Do not use more than three buds. If wood is scarce, two buds should give good results. Inserting the scion with a grafting chisel or small wedge, open the crack wide enough to insert the scion easily, figure 2e. Insert the scion with a thicker side toward the outside Thicker side, right? Thicker side outside. Thicker side toward. Insert the scion with a thicker side toward the outside of the cambiums in contact to F. Well, I get confused here, man. F. Yeah, that's strange. You just insert the scion. You turn it around. That's bullshit, man. Uh, insert right. Okay, I got it. I've got it, man. With a grafting chisel and insert the scion with a thicker side toward the outside with the cambiums in contact. Although maximum contact is obtained with a straight positioning, a slight slant may help ensure contact. In figure 2G, the best contact point is about a quarter inch below the shoulder of the stack. After properly positioning the scion, remove the wedge or chisel from the split slit. The pressure of the stack against the scion should be greatest when the cambiums touch. When the scion is placed in the crack, the cut surface of the scion wedge should be almost entirely hidden. Two scions are usually inserted in each split, one at each side. This gives a better chance for getting at least one graft to grow. Waxing the cleft graft. The cleft graft should be waxed so that all cut surfaces are covered, figure 2H. Cracks sometimes develop as the wax sets. Check wax after a few days and again after several weeks to ensure that all surfaces are kept covered. Caring for the graft. After the graft begins to grow, it must also be given attention. During the first season, don't prune branches that grow. Grafts that grow vigorously may need to have the tips pinched out to stimulate branching. Grafts that grow vigorously may need to have the tips pinched out to stimulate branching. Tips pinched out, right? Very long shoots may break loose during strong winds. Cleft grafts should grow vigorously and need only light pruning to shape their development, figure 2i. Okay, that's I, man. Pruning, curing, right? Never prune heavily for the first year at least. After the first year, some training and branch selection may be necessary. Do this at the usual pruning time in late winter or early spring. 
if both sides in a cleft grow, a shortened one to allow the other to develop and become dominant. Do not remove the second graft until later, because it will help to cover the wound faster. In top working large trees, top working, it is best to graft about half the branches the first year, and the second half the next. Really, in top working large trees, it is best to graft about half the branches the first year. And the second half, the next. Start with the upper center limbs the first year. Start with the upper center limbs. Start with the upper center limbs the first year. The best time to top work is just as growth begins in the spring. However, it can be done several weeks earlier or later. Right, there could be a. Many branches, right, for the、uh, stock in top working large trees. Large trees can have several thick branches, or stocks, or trunks. It is best to graft about half the branches the first year, and the second half the next. Wow, that would be quite a work. Figure three, bark graft. A stock may be prepared with a single cut, left, or a double cut. Cut scion to form a shoulder. C for single cut left, insert scion under bark, making a、uh, making a tight fit. For double cut, use small nails to secure scions. Bark graft, veneer graft. Wow, that's quite a long article, man. Where are we? A bark graft, veneer graft. Bark grafting figure three is relatively easy and requires no special tools. It is similar to cleft grafting and may be performed on branches. Ranging from one inch to several inches in diameter. Stock preparation: the branch or trunk is cut off at a, a right angle in the same manner as described for cleft grafting. The bark graft can be made only when the bark slips or easily separates from the wood. This usually is in early spring as growth begins. Several techniques can be used on the stack for the bark graft. Figure three a: Make a slit in the bark about three quarter inch long. Make two、uh, slits in the bark separated by the width of the scion. Okay, so they got to be ample、uh, width between the two slits. Scion preparation: The scion should be. Dormant, so gather deciduous plants before that time and keep them wrapped in plastic under refrigeration to prevent drying. The scions, deciduous plants, so gather deciduous plants before that time and keep them wrapped in plastic under refrigeration to prevent drying. Under refrigeration to prevent drying. The scion should be four to five inches long, with two to three buds. Prepare the base of the scion by cutting inward.、Uh, by cutting inward, one to、uh, one, one, and one half to two inches from the base, then downward, forming a shoulder and long smooth cut. Figure three B. The long cut. Should extend about one third through the twig, keeping its base strong enough to insert, but not too thick. On the other side, opposite the、uh, on the side opposite the long cut, make a short cut to give the base of the scion a wedge shape for easier insertion. Oh, really? 
Okay, some kind of wedge, right? Uh, on the other, on the on the side opposite the long cut, make a short cut to give the base of the cyan a wedge shape for easier insertion. And the opposite on the side opposite the long cut make a short cut to give the base of the cyan a wedge shape for easier insertion okay so here this tip should be uh, like a wedge I mean uh, here side right you gotta be a uh, wedge shaped see on the up on the side opposite the long cut make a short cut to give the base of the cyan a wedge shape for easier insertion cyan preparation right inserting the cyan a knife may be used to leave the bark at the top of the slit but may not always be necessary push the cyan down and center it in the in the slate or between two slates uh, if the double slit method is used insert the cyan until the shoulder rests on the stab figure 3c if the cyan is large enough one or two small nails may be used to tighten the cyan to the stack some prefer to use electrical tape or masking tape to pull the surfaces tight. In some cases, the, the bark may not split or tear and nailing or wrapping is not necessary. In all cases, the graft should be thoroughly protected with wax over all open surfaces after it is completed. Figure 4. Side Graft A uh, cut cyan to form a short smooth w uh, edge. B. Make a slanting cut into the stack. C. Insert cyan so that cuts on thicker side match the uh, cambium of the stack. Cut off D. Cut off the top of the stack only after growth begins. Okay, it makes sense. Side graft, step graft. The side graft is relatively simple and is suitable for plants that are too large for a whip graft but not large enough for cleft or bark grafts. Figure 4. The plant or a branch that will serve as the stack should be between uh, 1 and 2 inches in diameter. The material for the cyan should be about 1 quarter inch in diameter. Preparing the cyan, the cyan should contain 2 to 3 buds and be about 3 inches long. Make a wedge at the end of the cyan similar to that made for cleft grafting, but it should be shorter. Figure 4 8. Make, the, make one side slightly thicker uh, than the other. It is not necessary to make the cuts more than one inch long. As with all grafting cuts, they must be made straight and smooth with a single movement of a sharp knife. Preparing the understack. Select a smooth area near the base. Use a sharp knife to make a slanting cut into the stack cutting. Figure for B. The cut should angle the cut should angle downward and extend about halfway through the branch. Inserting the cyan, pull the upper part of the stack back 
to open the cat, open the slit. Insert the cyan into the open cat with a slightly thicker side lying along the cambium. Set the cyan at a straight, slight angle to give maximum contact. Figure 4C. Hmm. Okay, I got it. When the tub is released, the cyan should be held in place, so no tacking or wrapping is necessary. Some people prefer to tack or wrap the union. So do this carefully so the cambial alignment is not disturbed. The stock and stock branch or stock branch should then be cut off 5 to 2 inches beyond the graft. Also, remove any lateral branches on the stub that might crowd the graft as it begins to grow. Wax the graft carefully so that all cut surfaces are covered. The tip of the cyan, as well as any open wounds made by removing lateral twigs on the branch, should also be waxed. After several weeks, when the cyan has started growth, the remainder of the stack should be carefully cut closer to the graft, and the new cut should be waxed. Figure 4D. Wax, wax, wax. Grafting tip, cyan. Cyan wood should always be dormant. Cyan wood should be made from previous season's growth and have a diameter of a quarter to three eighths inch. Uh, store the cyan in moist sphagnum, sphagnum moss, sand, or plastic bag in a cool place. It must be kept moist and cool until used. After the cuts are made, cyan must be inserted immediately, or cuts should be kept moist until used. Cyan wood should be made of twig sections with two to three beds each. Cut the tip of the cyan wood and recut the base before grafting. Timing: the best time for grafting is in the spring, just as growth starts. When necessary, grafting can start several weeks before growth is expected and can continue a few weeks after growth has started. If you have a dormant cyan wood in storage, and if weather is not exceptionally warm, other suggestions? The stock and cyan must have cambial contact for union and growth to take place. All cut surfaces must be covered and kept covered with the grafting wax until complete healing has occurred. In a few techniques, alternate methods for maintaining moisture in the union are used. But if you are grafting only a few plants, you will find waxing the graft most satisfactory. After the graft has taken and growth has started, cut off any side shoots or competing twigs that would shade or compete with the development of new graft. Wow, there was a, quite a long article. From this article, we learn such new words as science, stack, cleft, grafting, side grafting, uh, cambio, cambium, contact, slit, cut, open, a wedge, a uh, shoulder, uh, easier insertion. What else? New shoot buds, a dormant growth takes place, and so on. Thanks for listening. Have a wonderful Wednesday tomorrow.